Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Friday, February 8th, 2019 Decision Point Show with your hosts, Carl and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. All right, here we go. Uh, we'll be looking at daily and weekly charts for the S&P, Dow, NASDAQ, and OEX, small and mid caps. Then we're going to go through our DP indicators, the short-term Swenland trading oscillators, our intermediate term breadth momentum oscillator, and volume momentum oscillator. And then we'll do the big four. Carl will go over those with the daily and weekly charts. And then finally, we have our bonus material. We'll be looking at long-term indicator analysis, the Baltic Dry Index, which I know a couple of you have been interested in hearing more about since Dr. Elder spoke about it on Market Watchers Live. And then we'll also look at a chart with the unemployment rate and see how that is affecting or could be affecting the market currently. All right, so let's start off with our decision point scoreboards. And here you go. This week we had three new buy signals and they joined the Dow, which had already gotten its intermediate term trend model buy signals. And remember, these signals are generated when you get a 20, 50 day positive EMA crossover. And so we saw that last week for the Dow. Now we've got uh, the other three scoreboard indexes on board with that. And as far as the decision point sector scoreboard goes, we did get a new buy signal on the intermediate term trend model. On XLP, the consumer staples sector, the 20 crossed above that 50 day EMA and gave us a buy signal. So now all we're really waiting on is energy to get a buy signal. It's obviously been struggling likely because of what's been going on in oil, uh, but we'll be talking about that shortly. All right, uh, great to have you here, Dad. Everything yep. going well in Redlands? Good to be here. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and look at some charts. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll start off and then Carl will finish us off here. All right, so what I wanted to start with, I'm gonna look at the Dow and we'll go through all those scoreboard indexes and then I'll cover quickly the uh, S&P 400 and Russell 2000. So what we're noticing and what I wrote about Wednesday is that we did have these longer term uh, rising wedges, bearish formations, and they have more morphed into rising trend channels. However, with today's action, we got a tiny breakdown here on the Dow. And what I've noted on all of these large cap index charts is with that high we had earlier, we didn't get up to the top of that rising trend channel. And so what I did is I started looking at a short term rising wedge. And we'll look at some more of that on these other long term uh, on the other scoreboard charts. Also note on most of these large cap indexes, we've got PMOs that are topping or have topped. But at the same time, we also see the OBV has been confirming this rise. If I see the OBV start lowering below these bottoms we had before, uh, that would start to confirm for me that we're going to start seeing more to the downside. But you can see that declining tops trend line is actually, uh, you know, actually sitting here right at that support level as well. So we could see that hold. Uh, but when we get to our indicators, uh, I, I can tell you I'm not really thrilled with what I'm seeing. All right, and here is the weekly chart for the Dow. Again, there's a longer term declining tops trend line. We did get above that, but as you can see for the week, we did not actually close above it. Uh, you also have that longer term rising bottoms trend line. We got up there and again, it wasn't able to hold above it and fell back down. So this little cross here of the areas of, uh, you know, these rising trends and the declining trend seems like that's going to be a spot uh, that we're going to want to watch and could be that what trips up the Dow and these other large cap indexes, because as you're going to see, here's the uh, NASDAQ 100. We have a rising trend channel on the NASDAQ 100. I actually brought down the declining tops trend line. We were starting it from back here, but it had really gotten somewhat irrelevant uh, because it was so steep to the downside. So I decided to bring it down to these tops that we had back here in October, November, and uh, almost December. And you can see that that lines up in sort of a crisscross with the rising trend channel that we have. Uh, so price is right sitting right there 
at this crossroads. And as we saw on the Dow, it has already broken down from there. All right, and here's the NASDAQ 100 weekly chart. Uh, on the positive, we do have the PMO. It has bottomed and now has gotten it to a reading back above that low we saw in 2016. Uh, it's heading for that buy signal. And as you can see, when you look at it on the, uh, on the uh, weekly chart, that declining tops trend line, you, know, you can see that breakout, but it is sitting right there on it. OEX. And here we go, the rising trend channel that I noted uh, on these charts on Wednesday. And now they have broken down Thursday's action, as you can see, drop below it, although we did close within. Uh, now we're trading below that rising trend channel. I put in these little ghost uh, trend lines here, as you can see, another short term, uh, another short term rising wedge, which is bearish. And again, we're seeing the PMO top. Uh, you can see the OBV is starting to get a little suspect here, but if you know if we have a, a day uh, next week, if we start off Monday with a, a, a positive day, of course we're going to end up with a bottom here, and that would be rising bottoms along rising bottoms, and that would also be, excuse me, confirming uh, that move. Let me jump in for a second. Sure. Let me uh, notice that we did see a breakdown of the rising wedge formation. But boy, I'll tell you, this market just does not want to give anything up. No. I mean, it doesn't get the least bit nasty. I mean, it just, or if it seems to start that way, it just yeah. picks back up. So, right, you know, it's, it certainly hasn't gotten any great amount of fear when you get these breakdowns. No, it doesn't seem to be. And the weekly chart for the OAX. Again, these all look very similar uh, with the OEX. Again, we're right above that rising bottoms trend line, but we're all, and we've also broken above that declining tops trend line when you drop from October. So, you know, there's certainly some, you know, good news sitting out there on these weekly charts, uh, but overall, uh, wait till we get to those indicators. <laughs> that's, that's what I can say. All right, so here's again, you can see OBV is, starting to confirm these moves. This is the S&P 500, but we're also seeing momentum slowing. Makes sense, you know, since we topped and have been coming back down lower. And yes, now you're seeing a possible rising wedge in the shorter term here for the S&P 500. Something to There's consider. There's a problem with the OBV. Uh, you've, the, uh, the first of December, you have a top and the same, and then, uh, you know, uh, corresponding price top. And now we've got a OBV top way higher. And th wow. that's a reverse divergence. Right. So the, despite the, the volume coming in, we didn't get lots this. Lots of volume. It hasn't pushed the price up. It's not like price advance has suffered a whole lot, but it's still, it doesn't, uh, it, it should have exceeded that December top at this yeah. point. And it didn't make it, didn't make it to the top of the rising trend channel and didn't make it up there to test even these tops. And, uh, you know, and again, you're right with the reverse divergence. So we, it's reversed because it's, you know, usually we look at the positive and negative. A lot of people don't talk about reverse divergences. I think you and I are probably one of the few, uh, the few people who do. Um, but as you were saying, I think it was last week, if something just looks, uh, where you have something like this and you're seeing that volume going up, yet you're seeing those price tops going down, that's not a positive divergence. That would be reverse and that you're, you should expect um, the opposite. So in this case, like uh, Carl was saying, we've got volume moving up, but we're not getting the same action on the price tops. Just to clarify for folks. All right, and here we go, S&P weekly chart. Uh, again, these declining tops trend lines, we've got trading that has been above that for the week, which is positive. Uh, you know, it was above, it broke the declining trend and now it's starting to get back up here and hold a rising trend. And we do have that, the PMO is bottom, but we haven't quite gotten to buy signals yet. So I don't I, think I agree with that rising trend line, by the way. Oh, this one? Yeah, I, I think it should be drawn from the, uh, the low in 2016 and and then uh, take that 
Yeah, and then move that up higher and catch the lows. There you go, right yep. in there. there That's, go. I think, more indicative of what the trend should be. I should have mentioned this sooner, but <laughs> it just jumped out at me. In another no, that's of how it happens. I know that's the same for me. You start looking at charts that you're going to write about, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. All right, here we go. Another rising trend channel, a new um, rising, a bearish rising wedge off of the breakdown from that rising trend channel for the mid caps. Again, PMO is starting to turn over, which you don't want to see. Um, you know, OBV, not quite as, you know, we had declining tops here and we're getting declining tops, off, price tops, and that is a bearish confirmation. So not a, a a divergence at all it's it's a confirmation they're all going they're going in the same direction weekly chart for s p 400 there we go we've got another bottom and actually for the s p 400 weekly uh, chart on the the etf of course ijh we're almost uh, about ready for that buy signal it's really really close um, this is something that i'm looking at right now we had those declining tops on on the weekly chart and look what was going on with price tops that whole time so maybe another clue that we were going to see um, you know some some major downside all right russell 2000 then we'll go look at our indicators and i'm gonna pass it to you dad to take care of the big four and as you can see i actually drew this i mean i i drew it on this low back here in october it's not a major low uh, but it does match right up with that top. And then you can also see the 200 day EMA also is uh, resistance and price was unable to get above that and it is now starting to turn back down. And like with all those other indexes we just looked at, PMO is starting to decelerate and slow down in overbought territory. Come back here. Come on, there we go. And weekly chart, again, not too much different from, from the others that we've been looking at. Uh, you know, right now, I suppose you could look at that 43-week uh, EMA as, as, some, as a form of overhead resistance. You can see price twice uh, had difficulty, uh, was unable to get above it, and, and this could be the spot, you know, for that turnaround. Of course, the PMO does look, it's looking up, it's encouraging, um, but what isn't are these indicators. So the ultra short term indicators, I, I don't think that it's telling us anything great right now, but what I did want to point out and, and Carl and I talked about was that puncture of the upper Bollinger Band. You know, it took a little while and we got that uh, VIX really low. Uh, we haven't seen lows like that really back since, well, since we started our decline back so, in Yes, and you know, quite often it, it, the, the uh, VIX will creep along under the top line for you know so sometimes several days but it's when it gets to that top line you should be alert to something you know some probably a reversal coming right and honestly if you looked at this chart yesterday and you see the the climatic readings we had here on the uh, net ad and net ad volume you know those are fairly climactic readings there as you can see i drew it across um not really for the decline, you know, we've seen certainly far more climactic readings, but in general, um, that typically is somewhat climactic and could have been a clue also with that, again, another puncture of that upper Bollinger Band that we might start seeing more uh, downside. But you notice how the, the, the uh, uh, eight advances minus declines and, and the volume, they're, they're converging from, from the mid December down, it's, it's they're getting yeah. so they're not at, the range is narrowing. That's what I'm right. trying to say. That's, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's getting well. Volatility is low. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a concerning chart to me. Uh, we have these declining tops on the short term indicators. You know, we keep trying to come up. We had this really nice rally. And we had a very steep rise, you know, the tops, the price tops are rising very steeply, but you had these declining tops on these indicators. And I think that was, that's still certainly uh, something to be concerned about at this point. Uh, so that's something to note on those. 
And then the intermediate term indicators, you know, they topped, what was it yesterday? I think you said the indicators. Yes. Uh -huh. And now we're continuing lower here. We could be looking at it a, 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 a drop, you know, breakdown below that uh, signal line. So we might get that cross, which would be especially bearish in my opinion. And we're due, it's, it's, the indicators are oversold. I'm sorry, overbought. White. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll move over to your charts and get started with uh, the big four. Okay, and the dollar, uh, we've been looking at a, a long-term rising wedge on that chart, but I decided after today, we could see it, it, it uh, broke above a declining tops line. And I think so the triangle is more relevant at this point on the daily chart, mm -hmm. uh, a PMO. Yeah, rising above the zero line and that signal line. Let's go to the weekly. There we are. Okay, we still have a, a rising wedge formation. Uh, I'm drawing the bottom line um, um, closer in, you know, just uh, what is it, uh, about September from the September low. Uh, and it's not a very narrow uh, wedge, so. I'm not so sure it's relevant. And notice that the PMO has uh, bottomed as of today. So yep. we could be headed uh, you know, maybe up to that 2650 level. Right. Yeah, that's the one thing with these patterns you have to watch with wedges, um, even symmetrical triangles. You know, you don't want them to get too mature because ultimately it wouldn't take anything but a sideways move to just, you know, break break down out of them. I use that with air quotes because it's not really necessarily a, a, a big breakdown if it just, you know, drifts on through because you've just gotten so uh, close to the apex of, of the either the triangle or the wedge. Okay, gold is still performing well. Um, we've got, uh, we had a pullback after a breakout to, to uh, support, and now it's uh, broken out again short term. Um, looks like moving higher. The uh, PMO was actually negative divergence, but uh, that doesn't always uh, pan out. And it looks to me like uh, we're going to see uh, challenging that 1360 level just above it. What do you expect with the PMO? Because it does look very overbought, and I know. Um... Um, this is gold. <laughs> it, yeah. can get a lot, it can get a lot more overbought. So I'm not really concerned about it. Even though there's a negative divergence, it had its chance to break down and it didn't. So it's like being positive. You know, one of the things that we put up here is this uh, uh, premium discount for the closed in fund of Sprott Fiscal Gold Trust. And just to briefly explain that. Uh, mutual, this is a closed-in mutual fund. Normal mutual funds are open-end, and they price at the end of the day as the, as the total of their net uh, asset value. Closed-in funds have a certain number of assets, and they, they trade just like stocks on, on the exchanges, and they can trade at a discount or at a premium. So when they're, trained, when they're trading at a discount, as they are now, it shows bearishness uh, uh, within the, within the uh, investors. We like to see some green start showing up and it's been a little deal. And it's been a while, yes. it's not any on the chart, this one, but, it's, uh, but when it turns green, that means your sentiment is getting, has gotten bullish and that's a good sign because it takes bulls to make the prices go higher. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the uh, weekly. Yep, and I did want to note that uh, the correlation right now between gold and the dollar is pretty much non-existent. So we can be bullish on gold and on the dollar because they're really right now not traveling, um, you know, in hand in hand. So here we have uh, the. You can see back in, what is it, 2016, we did have some bullish sentiment uh, there. 
Now, sentiment can be bullish and not be a problem. It's when it gets too bullish or too bearish that you can expect some reversals. But we're not even close to that either way here. No. Uh, again, we can see gold has the, actually what you, we had there was a, a reverse flag formation, uh, the price. And uh, instead of breaking down from that, it broke up. So very, very positive activity. We've got uh, the PMO is above the zero line and it's looking good. Yeah. All right. USO, save ourselves some time for the bonus. We're almost there. Okay, and here's with oil, we have a rising flag formation, which is inherently weak. It doesn't mean everything's going to fall apart, but we don't, whereas a regular flag formation pulls back, uh, this one is kind of dis, uh, dis dissipating energy and finally it's going to break down. Um, I'm not saying, I'm looking for maybe a pullback to that 10, 1050 level. But the PMO just topped, so yeah, we probably have some more downside to do. All right, and the weekly. We have um, crude is in, in the fifty dollar plus range, and uh, I, what I'm seeing on both of those USO and uh, crude oil is uh, reverse head and shoulders formations, which mm. which is a positive uh, sign. However, the um, weekly PMO is, is kind of decelerating and getting ready to turn down under the signal line. That's a really negative, right. uh, very negative thing. Also, it's getting ready to turn down. It's already below zero. So weekly chart doesn't look quite as bad. Or, oh, this, this is the daily chart for TLT. No wonder. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is not too We just bad. did the weekly chart. <laughs> well, okay. Um, so here, I thought we had a head and shoulders forming there from in December, January, but this week it's breaking out. I, so I don't think that's going to happen. The uh, PMO is bottom and getting ready to cross up through the signal line. So I think we can look for higher prices here for, yeah. for a little while. See the weekly chart. Yep. Okay, we see a trading range is two years old, and uh, I, you know, wouldn't surprise me for it to go up and hit the top of that range. I don't know what what the potential is beyond that. To tell you the truth, mm -hmm. you know, I just don't have a. I just don't feel like uh, bonds are going to be that great over the next year or so. All right, we made it. We have some time for these bonus charts. Uh, they're great. You're going to love them. And here we go with our first one, long-term indicator signals. Okay, what, what I noticed uh, was that the, the latest uh, movement on the ITBM, ITVM were very, from the, very, uh, from the low at the beginning of the year, to the present, it's been straight up, not any hesitation whatsoever. It's been a really long trip. It went from overbought, I'm sorry, oversold to overbought now, and they're topping out. But this is when you want to, when you think, well, what has it done in the past in, in these situations, this kind of a situation? If you go back to 2016, you see the, see we had a very similar movement, and it, it started off a new bull market. Uh, the cyclical bull market. That's what I mean. Okay, now let's go back to the, another low, and I, and I don't see any. You, know, you might you know argue with me, but there are probably some others uh, similar to that. But I'm looking for as clean as uh, rise as I can see. And in 2009, we got got one when that kicked off that um, new. A secular bull market. Going back to 2003, once again, kicking off a cyclical bull market. And then just to break the pattern, in 2001, we had a, um, a shot at 
had tried to start a rally. It even had a breakout and then just double top and, and fell in a ditch again. So um, it could go either way, but we can we have certainly have an idea of what, what's happened in the past and you can take your cue from that. Right. It could be, give, well, I mean, it gives bulls something to hang on to anyway, right? Right. Um, I don't know how many um, get John Malden's um, uh, free newsletter, but uh, he, last week he had an unemployment rate chart comparing it to the SP 500. And we have, we happen to have in stock charts, we have the data on the unemployment rate. But the, this uh, goes along with the idea that things get better and better until they're as good as they can get, and then they get worse and worse until they're as bad as they can get. And um, then it repeats the cycle. Mm -hmm. But obviously, we don't have um, much lower we could go on, on the unemployment. And they, you know, we see that in 2000, it, it was very low. Um, so, Again, we had as low as it was going to get in 2007. And basically, these are all starting points for a new bear market. Now, there is there is no direct link between unemployment rate and uh, stocks, but it's just a, uh, it's a, a sign from within the economy of what's going on. And again, when you get very low unemployment, it can only get worse from there. Yep. All right, time for the last one here, and then we'll close it out. And Dr. Elder, you had him on, was it last week? Yes. And uh, he brought up the dry, belted dry index. And as I said, I hadn't seen this for quite a few years. I was aware of it. Um, essentially, now, this is a global index. This doesn't, this is not relate directly to uh, U.S. economy, but it shows basically um, the demand for shipping capacity versus the supply of uh, shipping the stuff to be shipped. So when, when the index is very high, it means that there is a high demand for room in the cargo holds of the ships and and uh, when it gets very low that means this, no, there's they're they're going begging in terms of having to fill up their ships and probably charging a lot less for for the cut for their shipping but when uh, dr elder showed this chart last week it was right around the index was right around 1000 and he was concerned about it then, but now I look at it, it's really yeah. a big dive. So yes. this, this basically tells us, to me, it says, I'm not worried about, me personally, I'm not worried about sh people with ships. What it's telling me though, is that there's a lot, that there's a lot less uh, cargo in the pipeline, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no, not any demand for the shipping, so that, um, Sounds given, like Dow theory. About, given what we know about Europe economy, um, yes, that's probably a reflection of what's going on there. But it is a it is a concern. It's one of the things that is bearish for the market. Well, we covered everything in our half hour. Um, thanks, Dad, for being here. And I'm going to thank all of you for being with us today. Please remember to complete this survey as you exit. It is underneath the Stock Charts viewer on Stock Charts TV. We love to get your feedback and hear what you think about Decision Point. As a quick reminder, Decision Point airs Fridays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we'll see you back here next Friday. Happy trading.